So match number two between the All Blacks and France is not too far away. Both squads have been named for the match in Wellington. Uh, obviously the first one finished up 52-11, which was kind of a blowout in the end. But, you know, up until uh, early on in the second half, it was still pretty close. If you know the All Blacks, they'll be looking at getting things done even even quicker than they did last week. So, you know, like I said, last week they had to wait until the second half before they really put some points on. Uh, they'll be looking to find a way to do that earlier this game, and they'll be looking to do it without having to rely on, not that I think they needed it, but uh, the yellow card was definitely a turning point in that game. So if they can crack the French defense um, without the benefit of yellow card and without having to wait 60-odd minutes, 50 minutes to do it, uh, I think the coaches will be perhaps a little pleased. Uh, for the French, they'll obviously just be trying to bring that scoreline a bit down. I mean, obviously, you've got to be targeting to win. You don't go into a game to lose, but um, obviously a scoreline closer than 52-11 would, would, be, uh, would be welcome. Um, for the All Blacks, they've un named an unchanged lineup, so... Uh, I thought maybe they would experiment, but it looks like they're going to go, we're going to win this series in two games, win it convincingly, and then I'm assuming they will experiment for the third game with the series kind of already in the bag. I mean, it's disappointing when you see guys like Moonga and Taufua having to sit there on their hands, not even able to get onto the bench, but I mean, such is the nature of that all-black squad that it is really hard to get in. Um... But yeah, um, based on that scoreline of 52-11, I mean, you feel like they could give some other guys a crack just leading up into the World Cup next year, so you're building a bit of depth, but I guess they figure that one and third game is enough. I mean, who knows, they might play the same team three games in a row, but uh, I, I would have thought that's unlikely. You know, guys like Damian McKenzie and, and uh, Nani Lamapi, who had pretty pretty impressive performances from the bench, kind of retain that super sub role they've, they've not done enough to get a starting spot so um yeah we'll see how things go for this one and the next one uh for france it's five changes including three guys who uh, have just flown over um after competing in the top 14 final so um galatier comes in at number eight four moves to 15 so maxime medard is on the bench which is probably not a bad thing because he didn't have his best night uh, in auckland uh, LaRue starts in the second row, so Gabriel's on the bench, and um, Fiku is on the left wing as Grosso has like facial fractures after that high shot and uh, has had to go back to France. So um, in terms of this game, the spotlight is absolutely on the All Blacks for their tackling. You feel like the amount of scrutiny that's been on them over the last week with I mean, the fact that the French got a, a yellow card for a high shot, the All Blacks guys fractured a guy's face and didn't get any punishment. I mean, think Tuga Fassi has had a warning from World Rugby. Um, means the spotlight is definitely on. I feel like if there's anything even doubtful, it's probably going to be leaning towards a yellow card to the All Blacks. So they'll definitely need to watch their, uh, their technique, watch their discipline, because um, as I said, you know, the, everyone's eyes is on them. Hopefully we get to this game and we're not talking about the ref at the end. That would be, you know, that would be uh, most welcome. Uh, for the French, I mean, they need to improve their line-out for sure. They only had, like, just over 50% of their their line-outs being won in a game where they had, you know, the All Blacks had 60% of the position. So when you've got that limited position, you need to be winning your own line-out ball. So that's a, a key area for them to just get a quick win is to, you know, retain a bit more of that ball at the line-out um and yeah just keep their composure if they do go down like i mean i know some of those tries last week were just all blacks magic but some of it was pretty poor defending as well so they're gonna need to just you know if they go down early don't put your heads down just keep on fighting and um yeah i mean look what the the springboks did with england last week they came back from you know 20 odd points so uh, i know that's a different story with the all blacks in new zealand but um yeah, that they need to show some character for sure. So the, the bookies have got the All Blacks by <clears throat> a whopping 28 points. I think last week was 24. So even more kind of confidence in them this week. I suppose naming an unchanged lineup has a hand in that. Um, but yeah, we'll see if the French are able to kind of narrow it down. Hey, if they could get a win, that would make that third test so much more interesting rather than being a dead rubber. But... Um, yeah, 
uh, by all accounts, it's unlikely. What do you guys think of the game? What do you think of the All Blacks team? I will put uh, both teams in the description as well so you guys can have a look. And um, yeah, let me know your thoughts. Do you think the All Blacks should be experimenting now or are you happy for them to wait until game three, assuming that's what they're going to do? Do you think this French team looks a bit better on paper than last week? Um, how do you think it's going to go? And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you again after the game. All right, see you later.